All right, so I drove out here to Arizona and just want to put in this, what is it? The crank position sensor, I believe. Here's the part number. I ordered this from Rock Auto before I left. It's been sitting in the van. I meant to put it in last week. So I'm going to do that right now. It's no big deal. You've seen plenty of videos on this, but then I got to do a couple other things under the van. So hang on a moment. This is some packaging material. This is pretty great to lay on on the cold concrete because it's warm. <laughs> so here we are. This is your crank position sensor and there's your harmonic balancer there, oil pan, front axle. And let's see if we can film this and look at it at the same time. It's kind of hard for me to, you guys know the story, you've been here before. I'm trying to angle this, uh, so it's practically vertical and so not pro, I know. All right, it's an eight millimeter bolt. Hmm, look at that. You loosen it and it comes off. Every time I get under here, there's one drop of oil right here. So I think this front plastic cover leaks a little. Over here. Yeah, that's filthy. Guess you got a yank on it a little. There we go. Alright. Wipe that down a little. <laughs> Try not to have my face directly under it next time. Mm. I don't have my safety goggles on. Somebody gave me some grief about that last time I was under here. I just pulled this off. So I'm going to put that back on. Hang on a second here. I don't need to show you everything. I'm going to go ahead and put the next one on. <laughs> my favorite. It's my favorite thing to do. My happy place under the van. Not. I'm, I'm working on maybe four hours of sleep. I ate cookies yesterday late at night and I could not sleep three o'clock in the morning I'm searching through the house and I found a box of Alka-Seltzer that my mom must have obviously had in there and it brought back a childhood memory of uh, having an upset stomach when I was like nine in Vernon New Jersey and my dad you know middle of the night giving me my first Alka-Seltzer which tasted nasty to a nine-year-old but it worked <laughs> anyhow I was up in here and I'm just knocking the crud away and all this black muck. It's not greasy. You know, it's that grimy stuff that you get a little weeping of grease sweating on the engine and dirt collects over the years. And uh, you, know, you end up with this sort of thing. This is the old sensor. Looks like it's been in there a while. And the gasket fell out, you saw. So I'm gonna put that on there. I wiped it down, I'll wipe it down a little bit more. I'm gonna put that back in in a moment. But uh, just figured I'd show that off to you. Well, you got to put that gasket on this part first. Looks like. can't see very well in here it doesn't click in you just kind of push it in it comes out that doesn't seem that's all there is to it oh there we go all right 
definitely feel a click. Make sure you get that all the way in there. Looks like the hole is off in the bracket here. Okay, that's working. This is that little quarter inch drive I picked up at the swap meet a couple weeks ago. You want it tight, but you don't want to bust it off in there. That's why it's good to use a quarter inch drive on this. You can't put that much torque on it. So, yeah, eight mil, it's all plugged in now. And, uh, yeah, you can see some of this came off the uh, insulation. I hope you can see all that. I might put some more on there. So next thing is looking under the van and grabbing the drive shaft and looking for loose stuff. And you know, the CV, I'll show you a picture out in there, is leaking again over here. So hang on, we'll just do a quick visual inspection underneath the chassis here, and we'll take it from there. Look at that CV axle. Look at that CV axle boot. You can see there's grease on it, and this is brand new. So we're, we're it's only on one side. But we're throwing grease up into the knuckle and I mean this feels normal to me that feels like a normal amount of play I'm getting nothing here I'm getting nothing this way we'll play that way that seems normal to me okay this is interesting so looking up here I don't think you can see it look there's some grease Right there where the axle goes in, right here. I think you can see that. Fluid. Okay, so that's in and out and nothing. Okay, so nothing this way, in and out seems normal. I know that's clicked in. There was new seals put in here, supposed to have been. I'm not seeing a bunch of blowback from there, so that little bit might be fine. Show off what's going on under here. I don't like the way the wires look on that uh, starter, by the way. It's something I noticed before. See that? I really don't like the way that looks, and... I don't know. Did have to put that new battery in, and I wonder if that's. I don't know. I feel like I should redo those wires. We're having an issue, like I said, with this engine slightly leaning to one side. I talked to Dave about that yesterday, so I think we're going to redo that red bracket, give it some more height there. I'm going to make new engine mounts. I'll be talking to you guys about that soon. Got a new idea with that. Here's the new exhaust. It changed color. It is stainless steel. That's what you expect. Now, my vibration issue... Uh, while I'm driving, I noticed that It feels like while I'm cruising and I take my foot off the gas, I feel a little bit more of the vibration. The last time I had that as an issue on my Dodge, it was a drive shaft thing. It was the bolt came out of the third member right in here. And I don't know how I'm supposed to I don't know how I'm supposed to test that. I'd have to take the I have to disconnect this to double check, but I'm not sensing any I mean that's yeah it's not moving there's no play in here so that seems yeah, that's solid I got to check those bolts on the rear end because as you guys know after Hoopers did their work I found that a bunch of those bolts were 
They were all at one point. I went back there. It was weeks ago, and I saw a little drip. I can tighten them or loosen them with my fingers. So that's BS. Um, yeah. Who knows? Maybe that crank position sensor had something to do with something. I, you know, I didn't throw a code for that. I just knew it was super easy to do, and I had it with me. And I wanted to get underneath the here and uh, eyeball everything. So uh, I got a notification that the I ordered a new set of shocks, and they are a couple inches shorter than these, and they did arrive at my front door. And this is like, you know. In the service, you do all this low crawling, so you have to, you know, you get used to this sort of thing. It's been you know, a decade since I did that, but I'm very comfortable crawling around. <laughs> I'm filthy. Look at this. These are Ralph Lauren pants, man. Don't worry, I didn't spend the money on them. Uh, I wanted to show you real quick, and then we'll get out of here. This is one of those bolts, okay? This is a greasable shackle bolt. See the hole right there? Oh, it looks like there's a hole on one side. I may be wrong. I thought I saw a hole on two sides on some of the others. I don't think it's going to matter. So that's all they do. They take a hardened bolt. They drill in from the end. I do like what these people did. They machine down into the top so that Zerk fitting fits in there. So you replace these right here. It's a 9 16 by 4.5 inch bolt. And, uh, you know better spot where the there you go sunlight sometimes is a hassle so that's a direct replacement there and that zerk fitting will be fit sitting right there and i'll be able to just shoot some grease in there it'll shoot out the little hole and fill up the inside of there i got all four of them so Hopefully I'll take care of the which is exactly as annoying as I'm being right now. Sounds like Charlie Brown's parents in the back of my van. Have a great day. Be good to one another. Thanks for being here. It's a ridiculous video. <laughs> Why not? I cracked me up. Uh, bye.